Fala fala here to Hane de Valatala to Toku ni komo mai gelata mai of your name. Good evening. In our news bulletin for tonight. Ne fa ho ko e vili na ka e fa na kiang ke he fono ikipole ke he aho iniafi. Government faced their first vote of no confidence since taking office in May. Famo le ni we ta ma ve hiang ke kalo ke he mai de mahani kolo kolo vao ne ko fa ka ngai fa ka he he e tau ko lo he fa fono. Niue has become the 183rd country to sign the UN Convention Against Corruption. Hoko mai e tahatangata lang matai ke fai malulu sino ke tau holoanga fau fau hulutulu. A temporary physiotherapist is working to train health staff, while the health department looks at employing a full-time physio. Fa hoko e fono he tau lilifu e ke pule ke he aui nia fui moe. Matakupu lahi ni kua whakatu tāla ki ai, kwe vili nā kai whai whalana ki anga ke whanu i ki pule, ne whakatu wai hi lirifu e ke pule motu ko Terry Coe. Ko lau tōlu ne o moe ai e matakupu nei, kwe tau lirifu e ke pule motu ko Crossley Tātui, Olaf Jacobson, mo Stanley Kaloni. Toko hongu whuluma fitu e lirifu e ke pule, ne hoku atu ai ke whanu anga, ka kua tu ai e e ke pule maanga ko toi, Ko Dionto Fitu ke he kotofa whakatungu whono. Koe ono leia e mahi na tali mai he da wiliang mwai whakangahua e whakatungu whono fo ka kwa fita ni tuku atu e i wili nga kai whai whalana kiang ke he whakatungu whono. Whaka maama mai e Terry Coe kwa tuku atu e ia e matakupu nei ha kwa nga kai whai whalana kiang ke he tau whiwili anga he whakatungu whono ha kwa nga kai tūmita ke he tope patope e koutu Mwai kwa whai mga hao fuo ki heno fuo kehi e e toki toki e koutu mwai motu Mwai fwalu ni hai e hitoka kano ne kwa manako ke whakatu tala Mwai tuku atu wai ke longa na e hitop tangata Nga kai no fuo e matu pali mia ko sui toke e taalangi ke whanu anga nei Ha kwa whina atu wai e ke tofi kau whaka maluru o seno ke motu ko nisilani Hia fuo ki mwai ikipole ko Dalton Tangilangi Kwa whina atu fuo ke e ke taha whanu anga ke motu ko siya mani Kwa kano ia Ni kwa tuku atu wai ke hitau eke pule langwatai ke hitau iki pule ko mwana inu, mo marine melikitama tau e fasi ke tutu wai ke hitau ko tofanga ko hitau hangai iki pule. I nga si hitau eke pule mai fai mga hoke whakakis minatu to tuku atu wai ke hivirianga mai toko fa ne kwa omoe mta kupu ka e hongfu maua ne nga ka italia ka umhala e mta kupu nei. Whakawe e e whakatu whanu ke hifalana ki anga he laula hi hitau eke pule Mwai kwa matutaki ai e taunga hua hau tūru tūnga kwa whumahan ki ai. Government has faced its first vote of no confidence since the elections in May in a special assembly meeting that was held yesterday. Notice was given during the new legislative assembly meeting last week that common role member Terry Coe had submitted a motion for a vote of no confidence in cabinet. This was supported by three members, Crossley Tatui, Olaf Jacobson and Stanley Kaloni. Some of the reasons for the notification was given due to government's financial situation with a deficit budget and the absence of Premier Talani from meetings for a lengthy period of time. According to the acting speaker, Dionto Fitu, Premier Sir Toket Talani was absent as he is currently on medical leave in New Zealand and Minister Dalton Tangilangi was in Germany on government business. In their absence, the two members assisting the ministers, Maureen Malikitama and Mona Inu, were given the acting ministerial roles to address the vote of no confidence in cabinet. 17 members of the new legislative assembly were present, but member for Tsui, Dionto Fitu, remained as the acting speaker. There was lengthy discussions about a variety of points raised by Mr. Ko and those who supported the motion. When put to the vote, there were four votes for the motion and 12 against. The vote of no confidence was defeated. Although Mr. Ko did not garner the support from the majority, he said this was another way of getting points across to government to consider and for members of the public. The vote of no confidence was defeated by a clear majority and government can now continue with its normal operations. Kwa whakamboli tuwai, anyway, e mawehianga he tau motu kau whakatahe lau lulangi ni kwa whai anua anua anga ke utakehe e tau mahani kolo kolo vao mwe whakaonga hehe e tau koloa he tau whakatu whono. Ne whakahokwe whonu anga nei ke he motu ko Austria 
we lilifu go Dalton Tangilangi ni hukui for the phone with phone wangane go mui tuwa ke follow the fuka kwa wangane go fita ni hifuka hoku ke mutu tali mahi tawka mole go to fuka kwa wangane mui tawka hukui for the phone tawka mui tawka wifafai for the phone mui tawka eke pule go fahane tawka tali mahi he nga hua mui tawka UN PREC ni kau fuka tahi tawka hong fuma lima ea tu mutu mahi pasifika ha kwa fuka mole ea ema vihe angane Kwa whakakisi ai niwe e manako ke whakamalolo e tau ngahua mwe tau mwe tuanga he motu ke whaiwhalana ki anga foki kwa tonu e tau whiwhiriana tau ngahua ke he whakaonga anga he tau koloa he kautu. Ne whakamoli hei he whakatufonu niwe ma vihanga nei ka mata whaka ngahua mai he aho toru i anua vema. Niwe has become the 183rd signatory to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, joining other nations at the Conference of the State Parties in Vienna, Austria. Minister Dalton Tangelangi represented Niue at this meeting, and this follows a range of training workshops that were held with government officials, parliamentarians and civil society in Niue from last year. The UN PRAC project is an Australian government-funded project involving 15 Pacific Island nations for a period of four years. By signing up to the convention, NIWE has shown that it takes anti-corruption commitment seriously and it is a positive pathway to further integrity in the island. According to Minister Talangi, Tangelangi, NIWE is focused on adopting the best practices possible to prevent corruption and work with other countries to make sure ill-gotten gains from bribery and corruption are returned to the local community. Cabinet signed the convention, which came into force on the 3rd of November. Hanefe tau se i whalu a tau fuka kwa anga ke whahi malolo sino ke whahi tau nei ka lata mai tau puhala lang matai atu ke whawhaw sino ko haina otu muli ko ia ne lahi ngā hua ke he motu ko New Zealand i mai kwa honko mai ia ke tōre whahi tapu ke lang matai atu e whahi malolo sino ke whakatakatako e whalu e tau puhala ngā hua mai tau whahi malolo sino hani wei Koe whaa hei tapu kwa mwale mai kei ke tau se tau whakaa kwaanga mai tau tangata ne whae lewe ki au tuwa i ke hei tau mamatua fua kau. Ke hei tau pohala ne kwa mai kei ke whaa whae tau seno, kai nga kei ni nono ftu mau ke hei tau mohenga. Hai ei fua ki e tau whakaa kwaanga ke laa tai mulu tolo e tau tangata whaka holo e mbeleni, ha koe lo hei tau maha ko lo tuwi ia ne kwa lang matai atu ke hei whalo tau fewa po ke tau matakau sipote. Ta la hau hei tak tau ke whaa hei malolo seno kwa mwale atu e e tulu tau he nga kei whaita ngā tā ke lā mō tei atu ke tau whā hi whawhao seno si kwa kumi pūhāla he manga hunei ke maua tā tā ngā tā ke hua mau ke whalinga ngao. A mana ki e pulotu nei ke liu mai fōke ke tau ka hau ke tōre whahe tāpū a tō maua tā ngā tā ngā hua pawaki. Physical therapy, mostly known as physiotherapy, is a primary care speciality in health care that looks at using mechanical force and movements. Niwe's hospital has been without a qualified physiotherapist for a few years now and they have called on the services of a specialist from New Zealand to work on setting up systems to address the needs of people in Niwe. Niwe Fall have managed to secure the services of Haina Otumuli from New Zealand for three weeks. He explains a bit about what he's been able to do while he's been in Niwe. Yesterday we ran through um, some training with the, the aged care um, staff. Uh, we went in last week and we have a lot of um, um, elderly up there that are kind of bedridden, um, on prolonged bed rest or you know not mobilizing as much, not getting out and about. So yesterday we went through some passive range of motion kind of exercises. Um, and th These are exercises that we do back home with some of our rest home patients and and uh, those that are in bed rest, um, just to help um, with moving of joints and moving of muscles and all that kind of stuff. Um, so next week we will continue that training and then hoping to look at doing some training around um, transfers and, and um, how to perform transfers safely. Um, and then with the ambulance drivers, uh, we're going through some strapping practice. And so from my understanding, um, at some of the netball games and some of the, 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 the rugby games, it's the ambulance drivers that are providing kind of first aid type stuff and doing a lot of the strapping. So 
Um, I was approached by one of the, the ambulance drivers and asked if I can take them through some, some strapping practice. So there are a lot of people that, that need the strapping, um, but sometimes uh, they're a bit unsure of what they're doing. And so, um, yeah, we're going to run through some stuff for them, um, with them. And now into his second week, the opportunity has provided time to meet with a wide range of patients presenting with different kinds of ailments requiring advice or treatment. We've got a lot of elderly coming in with like osteoarthritis type stuff. We've got a lot of um, sports people coming in um, with like pretty um, decent injuries. I've seen a lot of um, patellar dislocations, shoulder dislocations, um, and like yeah, a lot of different kind of kind of injuries that um, you know it's it's understandable here because there hasn't been a physio to be able to address all this. But these are injuries that you'd see uh, every now and then back home, and so it's really good for me coming here to be able to help uh, some of these people. Um, and some of the patients that are coming in because these, uh, some of the people I'm seeing now were injured last year, injured in January. So they've been carrying these injuries for a very long time. And some of uh, um, our older people here um, who are hardworking, you know, uh, are going to the bush every day and all that kind of stuff, have ongoing back problems um, that receive, you know, the massage here and there that gives you a temporary relief. But um, what I've been trying to uh, do here is more, more education of, uh, um, to them about um, what they could do other than massage to help um, uh, kind of fix the problems that they've, they've been having. People have been encouraged to see a medical team at the hospital before being referred for any specialised physiotherapy requirements. Coming here to Niue, um, there is a definite need for a physio and even talking with our uh, specialist that's come on island like that's been my understanding his recommendation um, previously was to get a physio here on island a lot of the a lot of the injuries um, that we, that I have seen are preventable um, but preventable under the right kind of supervision and under the guidance of a trained physio so those you know that are interested in it um, are really encouraged to, to to take it up because there is a definite need here and, and for people I know a lot of the time what holds people back especially now in our Pacific Island mentality is that they think that physios are masseuses and that's what we do for a living physios are not masseuses physios are specialists in movement so our job is to um, restore restore normal movement in people and so um, if that's something that you'd like to do definitely take it on because it's, uh, um, it's interesting, it's pretty good. This is only a short term stint but there will be a follow up visit next year for another three weeks. Those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. Do join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.